This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. All right, so I'm talking about this story now. The EFF reports that the Attorney General of California has told ICANN to stop the private equity takeover of .org. We'll see if that's actually true or not. And there is an update here that's really important. On 420, ICANN has postponed its decision about the sale of .org until May 4th. And this letter may be why. Let's go over the letter now. This is from the office of the Attorney General. This is, you never want to receive a letter from the office of the Attorney General, especially if it's directed specifically to you. Dear Mr. Botterman and Marby, who are the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers Board Chair, President, and CEO. I urge ICANN to reject the transfer and control over the .org registry to Ethos Capital. The proposed transfer raises serious concerns that cannot be overlooked. So if you don't know what's going on here, there is a nonprofit corporation that controls the .com and .org and .net. All of those names uh, get assigned. It's like a big phone book and there's a consortium, the ICANN. The Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers is a nonprofit corporation that oversees the distribution and, and fee charging and rules and everything for the registry of domain names. ICANN and its subsidiary, the Internet Society, the, uh, the ISOC, I think, was going to be sold from public interest registry to Ethos Capital. And if sold to Ethos Capital, there is concern that .org domain names could suddenly be either very expensive or the rules could change in a way that's very unlike the internet and how fair and open it has been up until very recently. So Javier Becerra, Attorney General of California says, my office has responsibility for supervising charitable trusts in California, for ensuring compliance with trusts and articles of incorporation, and for protection of assets held by charitable trusts and public benefit corporations. My office is tasked with the authority to investigate transactions and relationships of corporations and trustees for the purpose of ascertaining whether or not the purposes of the corporation or trust are being carried out in accordance with the terms and provisions of the Articles of Incorporation or other instrument. To that end, my office conducted an investigation of ICANN and its role in approving the transfer of the .org registry agreement from the Public Interest Registry, the supporting organization to the Internet Society, ISOC, to Ethos Capital. A component of our review begins with ICANN's Articles of Incorporation, which state as follows. ICANN is not organized for the private gain of any person, recognizing the fact that the Internet is an international network of networks owned by no single nation individual organization, and as such, ICANN will pursue the charitable and public purposes of lessening the burdens of government and promoting the global public interest in the operational stability of the internet. ICANN shall operate in a manner consistent with these articles and its bylaws for the benefit of the internet community as a whole. ICANN followed the principles set out in its Articles of Incorporation and bylaws when it embarked on its search for a new .org registry operator in 2002. At that time, ICANN recognized that the .org domain required unique protections. For example, it noted that in view of the non-commercial character of many present and future .org registrants, affordability is important. A significant consideration will be the price at which the proposal commits to provide initial and renewal registrations and other registry services. Nearly two decades later, ICANN reaffirmed its view of the unique nature of the .org registry. Quote, when ISOC applied for and was awarded the right to manage .org in 2002, ISOC made commitments to the internet community on how it would differentiate and uphold the unique purpose of the .org top-level domain. ICANN awarded the management of the .org registry with the belief that the ISOC was uniquely positioned to live up to these commitments for the long run. These commitments have been maintained since that 2002 award. ICANN selected PIR as the registry operator for the .org top-level domain because of PIR's commitment to 
institute mechanisms for promoting the registry's operation in a manner that is responsive to the needs, concerns, and views of the non-commercial internet user community. If, as proposed, Ethos Capital is permitted to purchase PIR, it will no longer have the unique characteristics that ICANN valued at the time that it selected PIR as the nonprofit to be responsible for the .org registry. In effect, what is at stake is the transfer of the world's second largest registry to a for-profit private equity firm that, by design, exists to profit from millions of non-profit and non-commercial organizations. Since news broke of the proposed sale of PIR and the transfer of the .org registry agreement to a private equity firm, numerous concerns have been raised from all corners of society, including ICANN's own at-large advisory committee. Soon thereafter, ICANN appropriately raised crucial questions seeking clarity on a range of issues, including information about the entities and individuals involved in the proposed sale. As discussed below, while PIR and Ethos Capital have responded to some of ICANN's inquiries and provided some of the information sought by ICANN, numerous issues remain unresolved. Further, Ethos Capital, ISOC, and PIR have refused to produce responses to many critical questions posted by the public and internet community. In light of these questions and the objectives stated in ICANN's Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws, as well as its longstanding commitment to an appreciation of the unique role of the .org registry, ICANN must exercise its authority to withhold approval. It sounds like the Attorney General is saying, don't approve this sale at all. Little is known about Ethos Capital and its multiple proposed subsidiaries, including PIR LLC, which will be converted from a nonprofit corporation into a for-profit corporation. Even less is known about how these for-profit corporate entities and private investors will operate their businesses. Without such information, it remains unclear how the .org registry and community will be impacted. The affected community includes 1,200 registrars, millions of registrants, and hundreds of millions of persons who rely on and engage with the .org domain across the globe every day. Given the lack of transparency regarding Ethos future plans, approval of the transfer may place at risk the operational stability of the .org registry. PIR and Ethos have failed to respond to ICANN's questions regarding PIR's financial picture after the sale. PIR maintains that its anticipated income will be sufficient to service the $300 million loan necessary to complete this purchase and maintain its level of operation. So wait a second, hear me out here. PIR is being purchased, but they have to provide a $300 million service, they have to provide $300 million to repay a loan. Now, I understand that there's probably some accounting going on here, but that just automatically sounds suspect. If I go and buy a car, I have to get the loan to pay for the car. I pay back the loan for the car. This is like if I go and buy the car and the dealership has to pay a loan on the car. Now, yes, I, there's, I'm, I'm withholding one fact that the purchase is apparently for $1.2 billion, and apparently $900 million of that is not a loan, but $300 million of it is a loan. Somebody's going to have to explain that one to me, but that automatically makes this suspect that there's this much money at stake. What's wrong with the current state of affairs? I really don't understand what's wrong with the current state of affairs. It's a not-for-profit organization. It shouldn't matter if someone wants to purchase it and turn it into a for-profit corporation. It's not meant that way. This is a non-profit organization. They're not supposed to have a profit motive at heart. They're supposed to have their bylaws and their articles of incorporation. Their mission should be what's at heart. Additionally, as a for-profit entity, PIR will now incur tax liabilities, and its loan will be due in five years. It is therefore disturbing that Ethos has failed to identify the new services it contends will generate the necessary revenue to cover those expenses. While PIR currently has sufficient income for its operation, as a nonprofit, it pays no taxes and is not saddled with a $300 million loan, and investors who expect a rate of return. 
the unstable economic climate makes predictions of future revenues even more speculative. If the sale goes through and PIR's business model fails to meet expectations, it may have to make significant cuts in operations. Such cuts would undoubtedly affect the stability of the .org registry. The absence of critical information is troubling given the unique nature of the .org community. In the event Ethos Capital, a new company without any track record that appears to have been formed for the purposes of taking control of the .org registry makes any mistake, it will be at the expense of the .org community and will impact the broader internet community. The cost will be felt downstream, affecting registrars, registrants, and individual users who make up the global internet community. ICANN's analysis of the need for the stability of the .org registry must take into consideration that some of the .org registrants are critical organizations dedicated to assist in times of crisis. The list of such organizations is long, including the World Health Organization, the World Bank, the Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, and the United Nations. PIR, the nonprofit entity, has dutifully managed the .org registry to the benefit of these entities for more than 16 years, permitting Ethos Capital or any other business to take control of the registry without clarity about the potential changes poses meaningful concerns to the nonprofit community. ISOC purports to support the internet, yet its actions from the secretive nature of the transaction to actively seeking to transfer the .org registry to an unknown entity are contrary to its mission and potentially disruptive to the same system it claims to champion and support. Assuming, for argument purposes, that Ethos Capital possesses ideas to improve PIR's financial health, it is unclear what prevents PIR and ISOC from engaging in improvements now. No response has yet been provided support the proposition that as nonprofit corporations, PIR is currently restricted from engaging in new practices that would both improve their financial health while furthering their charitable mission. There has been too little information provided about the sale process by which the proposed transfer sale was agreed to by ISOC. If ISOC was concerned about diversifying its revenue streams, what did ISOC do, if anything, before deciding to sell the .org registry agreement? Why did ISOC not conduct a competitive bid process for a new registry operator if it wanted a change in the registry operator? Did ISOC explore options other than a sale to a private equity firm, given that its nonprofit its status was key to PIR becoming the .org registrar? What consultation, if any, did ISOC conduct with its stakeholders prior to proceeding with the proposed sale? With ICANN's unique role in coordinating and managing internet infrastructure, its global reach cannot be overstated. In furtherance of its mission, ICANN must consider the impact of its decision within the current global context. Just last year, ICANN and PIR renewed the .org registry agreement. The new registry agreement removed price caps on .org domain names, despite receiving over 3,000 comments in opposition, with only six individuals in support. There is mounting concern that ICANN is no longer responsive to the needs of its stakeholders. ICANN has an obligation to weigh the impact of approving the proposed transfer of the .org registry in light of the lack of information compared to information ICANN possessed and the criteria it used when it first awarded ISOC PIR the privilege to operate the .org registry in 2002. My office is also concerned the .org registry agreement with ICANN contains a presumption in favor of renewing the agreement following its expiration. This automatic renewal provision leaves the nonprofit company that uses the .org registry with no protection. While the automatic renewal provision makes some sense when the .org registry was operated by PIR and ISOC that had solid track records, it makes no sense to extend this provision to operators that have no experience operating a registry. My office is committed to protecting California's and the public's interest in a properly functioning and accessible .org domain system. ICANN has long recognized the unique nature of the .org registry as the Internet's home for non-commercial entities and interests. ISOC and PIR are charitable organizations that are accountable to their community stakeholders and to the public at large. In contrast, a private equity firm is accountable only to its investors. Given the concern 
concern stated above, and based on the information provided, the .org registry and the global internet community, of which innumerable Californians are a part, are better served if ICANN withholds approval of the proposed sale and transfer of PIR and the .org registry to the private equity firm Ethos Capital. This office will continue to evaluate this matter and will take whatever action is necessary to protect Californians and the nonprofit community. Sincerely, Javier Becerra, Attorney General of the state of California. So that's really interesting. I'm getting the impression that the Attorney General of California is very concerned that Ethos Capital has some ulterior motive separate from the uh, fair adjudication and operation of the .org registry in a, uh, in a non-commercial matter. So let me know what you think in the comments below. It sounds like the vast majority of people are against the sale and transfer of the .org registry to a for-profit uh, ethos capital. It's like an investor's organization. It's, it's a capital organization. It's a, it's a venture capital organization. It's not a company that is equipped to and set up for the, the operation of the .org registry, which we already have an organization that is set up to operate the .org registry, which is something that nonprofits are made for. I'm, I'm looking into this a little bit because we're working on turning lawful masses into a nonprofit eventually. And one of the keys is that there aren't stakeholders in a nonprofit the same way that there are with a for-profit. The people who are stakeholders in a for-profit company are the people who their profit is at stake. Like they get dividends, they get paid by the organization, not just as a paycheck, but as like a, a, a cut of the profits. A nonprofit is not supposed to have that. A nonprofit's stakeholders are actually its community that it serves. It's supposed to have a mission statement and bylaws and articles of incorporation that govern what it does. It's supposed to outlive its creators. It's supposed to be created for the long run, not for some short term and then suddenly get transferred to a for-profit organization and get converted into a for-profit organization. That's weird. That's just that's that sounds like it's completely in violation of the spirit and maybe even the law of charitable organizations. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you concerned about .org pricing going out of control or becoming una un unattainable or, or just restrictive for nonprofit organizations that need it to be an inexpensive thing? I mean, most domain names are only like 10 bucks, 15 bucks a year. So we're concerned that the price is going to just go up and up and up and up because a capital firm, a venture capital firm is going to want to make the most money. How do you make the most money? You charge a market clearing price. You charge the maximum price that also eliminates the goods, that also sells all the goods. If you've got a hundred widgets and there's demand for a thousand widgets, well, you can set the price for the hundred widgets to the maximum price that will get a hundred of them bought while still making the maximum profit. So the, the 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 fault or the flaw or the concern here is that the ethos capital private equity firm will want to set the price as high as possible while still selling domain names. And there's going to be like a graph. There's going to be like a, you know, a graph where there's there's a line going up and a line going down and it's the price and the demand and, and where they cross is the maximum price that you can get for diminishing demand as the price increases. So that's the market clearing price. They're going to maximize the price in order to maximize their profits. And now maximizing the price doesn't mean that domain names are going to be a million dollars unless that's also the market clearing price, unless, unless that's also what people are willing to pay. So it's not going to be like it makes it to a million dollars, but it might make it to 20 or it might make it to $50, it might make it to $100, who knows? And as domain names get purchased more and more and more and more, then, well, they don't really control the price of this of the private sale of a domain name. So that's not really a concern here. It's more this the initial sale of an unregistered domain name is what this uh, is what I believe is at stake here. But let me know if you have a disagreement or another perspective. 
All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. That is our show. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel. We are a community supported channel on YouTube and Twitch and Floatplane, and we get financial support from you, our watchers and listeners, uh, on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. Thank you very much for your monthly support in the month of April at the $50 plus level. Thank you to Wes Delge, Video Quarantined, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Michael Pierce, Jan Gray, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Nicely Done Defense, Wesley Mullen from Mullen PC, Sean McNamara, Josh Baker, Ugly Grill, Gregory, Shiloh T, Michael Moore, and Beastman. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel next to me here. Uh, all of the supporters are on that panel and go in the description of the videos that drop. We recognize you monthly starting on the second of the month because of the way Patreon and sponsors process on the first of the month. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I love you all. Have a great week. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Bye.